Craft Academy. <laughs> Well, welcome back to Craft Academy, and we've got a fantastic guest with us. Craig, we're going to talk about the tools that we need as well. You've mixed the mediums that we need. Yes. Can we just mention the tools as well? Of course, of course. The tools are very basic, actually. We have toothpicks or paper, uh, cocktail sticks. Yeah. You can use paper clips if you have any at home, if you don't have any of these. We've got a basic craft pair of pliers to submerge items that are smaller and you can't get your fingers around them. We've got a basic comb, which um, most people can relate to except me, of course. <laughs> I don't use them personally. <laughs> and we have another comb, slightly bigger. We pull the teeth out uh, so that we can vary the design's width. Oh, um, okay, that's so, a good tip. Yes. So these are tools that we use. So custom made. Custom made, <laughs> yes. And they are practical in easy to find. And great because they are the kind of things that you've just got lying around the home. Exactly. OK, exactly. so how do we get the paint onto the floaters? This is the floater that we mixed and yeah, we this allowed is the, it to go cool. Exactly. This has been yeah. left overnight and it's now cool and ready to use. Right. Um, I'm going to pour it into the container. Now, this is the lid of the kit we mentioned earlier. How full do you make it? Um, Ooh, it's best to use full. it right to the top mainly because the prints are far easier to pick up oh, okay. um, and you get a much more full print because the edges are all covered with the paint. Right. So you pick up the whole square. Having said that, if you want a specific shape design, you can use a baking tray which has a star design. Ah. Um, you can get the star design on your material or your paper. Yeah. So it takes on the shape and the form of the tray. God, it's so exciting. So, so it's, it's up to you if you want to do that. <laughs> but um, let's move on. So okay. basically, that's your, your, your tray. Your tools, we've poured the water, the floater mixture that we've mixed the night before. It's cooled down and thickened. That's ready to use. And again, once you finish for the day, you can pour this back into your container with a funnel and reuse it up to three months. Oh, wow, so it's okay. very, very economical, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is indeed. Now, this may discolor sometimes, depending on how much paint you're going to use. Mm. Some people tend to squirt the paint in because they're very excited about the whole process. <laughs> That's and me. it's a very easy <laughs> thing to do. Um, and don't panic, okay? Don't panic, there's no reason to panic. We are using the surface of the water all the time. The base doesn't really make any difference what's okay. underneath the water. So again, if it discolors, don't don't panic. Uh, leave it as it is and reuse the same water, even if it's discolored, um, up to three months. Okay. All right. Good point, Dad. Um, now I've mixed far more colours. Yeah. Than than the range we had wow. before. Wow. Um, again, one to one with water. And uh, you can vary the range of colors to your heart's content. Um, we're going to drop I in. I love the colors you've mixed. Some white. So the, the paints now are going to float on the water. This is what they call a foundation color. Very important start to your marbling experience. So the foundation color is more than one, one drop, obviously. It's a good eight to 10 drops. And right. that's going to cover the whole area and become the base foundation color. Right. That is creating surface tension. Okay. The next color will keep to itself. Oh, it's And so not ex expand to the sides. Yeah. They are just... fighting against the white now. That's really interesting. So that's how you're creating those shapes. Yes. The colors themselves so need... physically cannot mix on the water. Hence, your designs are crisp and clear. See, I've done that wrong in the past. You use I've... oils. It's yes. a different paint, completely Doesn't different paint. It doesn't work like this. This is no, brilliant. No, this is, a this is amazingly can... controllable. Uh, yes, that's the mm. thing. Yes. So the design, the, the paint will create its own balance within the tray's shape. Okay, if you had a circular jar, I mean a tray, yep. like a cookie tin jar lid, yep or even a basic like a glass bowl, bowl yeah. the whole design will take on the shape of the circle. Okay, I've got a question then. Is Does the amount of paint 
um, that you're using is that depend on the medium that you're going to you want to put in. So if it's fabric, would you use more or yes, if it's fabric paper, you would can you use, use more because it's more absorbent. Right. Paper you use less because it's far less absorbent. Yeah. Okay. So there's a specific amount in the instructions of a certain amount of drops you'd put in. Right. And um, is that okay? Is that this is the bit? This is the fun bit where you play. Yes. Yes. Oh, look at that. This That's a, a great technique. technique. So this technique is called um, a stone marble effect. Yeah. We'll be discussing techniques later on. Okay. Um, but basically, the does the paint, as you can see, don't doesn't mix at all. Now the tools come into play now. So we're basically going to take a toothpick. Yeah. And we're going to draw on the water. Okay. okay. Now there are thousands of techniques we teach. Every single design is unique. Yeah. Um, a little heart. Okay. Oh, I love that. Straight through a circle. Very popular amongst the kids. Very easy to do. You can zigzag. The little Christmas tree. <laughs> I love the little swirls at the end. Oh gosh, this is fabulous. That looks like fern. Yeah, fern is awesome. Yeah, that is, it's cool. Uh, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to those designs later on. But you want to have a go? Yes. Yeah. Have a doodle. Oh, Literally, never there are ask. no rules here. Do I go from the edge in? Go whatever you like. Just go across the colours. If you go across the colours, you'll create your pattern. But the control, as you can see, is phenomenally easy. Oh, you can see it as you're doing it. You can actually, oh, look at this. You can make little. I love it. It's absolutely, a... oh, look. <laughs> so this, is this your first it's... design? Oh, this, my gosh, this, this is amazing. It's absolutely, and it doesn't change when you've done it. It stays no, there. No. The control is very good. Now, having said that, the more you work into it, the more detail you're going to create. Yeah. Um, which can never end. Because the colours don't mix, you get this phenomenal oh, detail. Look, oh, I love it. I love it. Just, and I like that it's confined to the edges of the, the, of the container as well. Okay. Now, oh gosh, this is fab. <laughs> right, I've just got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Fantastic. Right, now can we see what it's going to look like? Now that on paper or fabric? Uh, paper, paper, because I want to make it into something. All right, so literally, this is photocopying paper, nothing special. Okay. It's a 160 oh, hang on a minute. I've GSM. I've seen a bit I want to change. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're basically just going to roll the paper, very yep. important. You don't want to get any air bubbles. Okay. So literally, it's going to roll on from left to right. Right, that's a great tip because I've had that's gone wrong for me as well. So left all the way down to right. Oh, that's amazing. That's that is very amazing. Good. For your first and design, that's absolutely and amazing. It's instant. Yes, it's finished. Gosh, it is. Oh, it's let me literally touch it. stained. Oh gosh, that is so so, so you clever. You cannot physically make a mess. Right now, how long is that going to take to dry? Well, you can put it face down on your kitchen roll. Yeah. Take off the water immediately. Now this is kitchen roll; it's very absorbent material. Yep. If you did this with any other paints, it would just peel right off. Yeah. But this also, paint will not do that. It's not even smudged or anything. No, it that's. Is, and it's almost. These are your colours. Yes. Right that yeah. is your colours. Oh, now. I've got, there's still a little bit left there. Can we, can we do anything with that? Yes, this is called a ghost print. Um, okay. So we're going to just play with this. It is literally whatever's left over. Right. Nothing goes to waste. So we've got just a couple of twirlies, just making <laughs> use of those twirlies. Again, this is a very attractive diary paper or writing paper. Yeah. When this dries, it's stunning. So. We're going to use that on another piece of paper. Oh, see, now I could do a card and that could be my insert. Exactly. Gosh, this oh, I can adds, now do stationery. It adds to any craft, whether it's paper making a uh, craft. Yep. Um, whether it's anything to do with paper printing. This, and do you know what I'm impressed with? It doesn't curl the paper, it doesn't make bubbles. It will slightly curl the paper, but that it's is curling, but it's minimal. But it's wet, it's wet. 
So what you do is you just take your water right off. That was minimizing the paper being curled. If it does curl, it's just put it into a flat book. Yep. And that compression will keep it flat. Okay, well, we've got more to do on Craft Academy. So let's do a quick recap of what we've learned in this lesson. And then we're going to come back with more ideas, more top tips. So first of all, we went through the tools that are needed and the comb, the toothpick, the toothbrushes, all those different tools. And remember, we also did a little bit about how to actually mix your paints and get those so that they were perfect to get started. And all of that is part of our fabulous Craft Academy.